You know, that is a terrific question because uh, it's actually pretty easy to be successful at this. Uh, and when I'm talking about this, I'm talking about owning, managing, running uh, your own apartment community, whether it's large or small, um, whether you manage partnerships. And, you know, on my uh, video and audio uh, that I have on YouTube and my podcast, those kinds of things, I talk about this in a roundabout way. You can read between the lines. And sometimes in some episodes, I'm a little more specific about this but uh, it might be confusing to some people so let me let me back up so I, I want to I want to enforce what I just said though and what I said was that it is um, it is easy to be successful at this uh, and I want to tell you why that's the case there's a caveat to it and I want to make sure you don't miss the caveat because I don't want to oversimplify this, but it is easy. Here's why. Let me let me use an example. So I sent out part of our brokerage business, what we do for apartment community owners, and this is here locally in Eastern Iowa. Okay, uh, we recently, as Eastern Iowans, got property tax increases. Okay, property tax increases. Of course. If you own your own home or you own a property of any kind, you know you're going to get property tax increases, right? However, as if you have any experience with this, some of those increases are pretty slow and consistent, but then you might have a year, maybe it actually goes down and you're like, awesome, it's down. But then you might have, holy shit, that, that went from here to there and how can they, where are they coming up with this value and how come it's so high? So we have, we being apartment community owners in the Cedar Rapids area marketplace, okay? We've just received our increases. And they're freaking huge. The average increase for a multifamily property in a given year is 23% increase. Based on the information I put together, 23%. So think about this. What that means is if your property has an assessed value of a million dollars, it now has an assessed value of a million two hundred and thirty thousand dollars. Pretty much. Okay? In a year. That will increase your property taxes in this market anyway. Every market's different, okay? But in this market, that'll increase your property taxes a minimum of $15,000 a year in one year. So how many landlords slash apartment community owners do you think have budgeted, have figured out enough increases in their rent, reduction in their expenses to take care of this? In addition to, how many of them do you think actually even have done any work on this? Like... How much is this going to cost me? How much more? Or how did they come up with that value? I can tell you how many. So when I got this letter, I looked at all of our increases. Like I said, it was a little over 20% on average. Which, by the way, one caveat of this, though, is it tells you the market's pretty good. Okay. But there's no reason to pay more than you should have to. All right? So then when I get this, I sent out a letter to all of the apartment community owners in this market of four units or more. And the letter basically said, hey, I'm going to be appealing my taxes. And by the way, if you're a partner of mine, this is the stuff that I do that I don't talk about. That's behind the scenes stuff. Okay. Um, it's not sexy and glamorous, but, you know, the results are in the numbers and in those distribution checks and in the value of the properties. But I sent out a letter to all of the apartment community owners in the Cedar Rapids area. It basically said, hey, I am doing my appeals. If you want me to do yours too, I'll do it. 
I'll charge you a little bit of a fee to do it, but since I'm there, I'll do it. And oh, by the way, I'm 88% on appeals and winning them, 88% at least getting some kind of reduction, 88%. Pretty good odds. So this went out to five, no, not 500. Let's say 400, 400 apartment owners. This letter saying, hey, your value's up 20 plus percent. I'm appealing mine. I'll appeal yours. What do you think? Out of 400 apartment owners, how many apartment owners do you think got back to me and said, you know what, Darren, do that. Could you do that for me? I want you to do it. 11. 11. So think of the math here. 400 owners. 11 got back to me. That's like 3%. Okay? Okay, so let's do this. It went to them through the mail. I did some email too, but it went through the mail. Let's say 100 of them never got it, didn't even open the letter. Let's say there's 300 left. That's still like less than 5%. Do you see why it's not that hard to really, really be good at this kind of stuff? 3%. 3%. Now, uh, here's another example. So a couple weeks ago, I had a Zoom call where I talked about how I get a lot of off-market apartment communities. So a lot of apartment communities that you own, if you're one of my partners, uh, listening or watching, uh, a lot of the apartment communities that we own were bought off-market. So they weren't put up for sale. I basically contacted the owner, worked something out, and did, dealt directly with the owner. We got a deal put together, et cetera. And that's appealing because it keeps the price down. At the end of the day, it keeps the price down. Um, and you're able to buy property much more profitably that way in general. There are some exceptions, of course, but in general. All right? So I had this Zoom call. I had 40 plus people sign up for it. I won't even get into how many got the invite. I had 40 plus people sign up for it. How many people do you think showed? 13. 13 out of 40. Again, a little over 20%. That's it. That's it. Um, and so I attended a, uh, apartment, uh, investor owner, multifamily boot camp here right before COVID really. So this would have been late, um, late 2018. Okay. Actually late 2019. Yep, let me think, let me think, let me think. No, late 2019. There we go, late 2019. Okay. There were 700 people in the audience. The guy that was running it, who's a very knowledgeable guy, many of you know who he is. You've listened to his podcasts. You probably even bought some product from him. Pretty knowledgeable guy, real, real knowledgeable. He offered a mentoring program, and it really didn't cost that much to do it. How many out of the 700 do you think actually signed up for the mentoring program? Now remember, they're there to be you guys and do what you do as well as they can do it. How many do you think? 15. 15. So you're seeing my point here, okay? How, and I'll talk to everybody on video right now, and I'll talk to everybody listening on audio right now, and I'm going to talk to you guys. How many people do you know and that you've talked to that talk about doing something with real estate? Oh, I'm going to invest someday, or I'm going to do something one day, or I'm going to look for property, or I've been looking at property over here, or I've been looking, pro and they never do anything. How many? 
a lot, right? I mean, I could make a long list of people that call me and they say all the shit they're going to do and then they never do it. Now, as that pertains to multifamily again, you see my point. From a competition standpoint, this is actually pretty easy because no one is really is really willing to do the work. No one's willing to do the work. So it's pretty easy. Okay? We don't have... Right now, the multifamily space is about as crowded as I've ever seen it. Speaking in generalities, I've not seen it this crowded before. But once the economy kind of coughs and things don't go so well, you'll see that go away quick. You'll see that go away fast. But again, compared to even though it's much bigger universe as it used to be compared to how many small numbers. So from a competitive standpoint, it's really not that hard because you don't really have a lot of competition. Um, and if you really want to analyze it and get really down to it, this is the case in most everything. Because most people don't want to do the work it takes to achieve what they think they really want to achieve. Because once they find out there's work involved and how much it might be, then it's easier to talk and plan and read and watch than to do what? Take action, right? So being a success at this, if that's what you, whatever your definition of success is, in the world of multifamily investment real estate, owning it, running it, managing it, selling it, buying it, whatever. Whatever your definition is, is for you is what it is for you. But guys, there's not a lot of competition out there. Comparatively speaking, even though, like I said, the space is much larger than it's ever been because of the work involved. Okay. Uh, so don't get too discouraged if some things don't go exactly as you would have liked or planned because, you know, the next opportunity will be, you, you can work on that in the next opportunity because you're not going to have nearly the competition for that that you think you would. Um, the competition for available apartment communities for sale, of course, is, is pretty heated right now. But I'm talking in terms of improving what you own, improving how you purchase, improving your financing, and you know all those other ancillary things. There just is not much competition, okay? So, and it's easy. But remember, my caveat, like I said early on, is you've got to be prepared to do the work. And if you're prepared to do the work, it is easy. If you're prepared to do the work, it's easy. So it is about price paying. If you're prepared to pay the price, there you go. Um, and the good news for us investors in multifamily, active or passive, is most people aren't willing to do that. Most people, especially during COVID, right? So how many, so I had a job interview. We interviewed two applicants today. Interviewed two applicants today. And they wanted to talk about what's going on with COVID. How, we, you know, what do all, and they're all kind of worked up about the COVID situation. Well, it's a great excuse for people not to get into the market right now as a multifamily owner or investor. Or it's a great excuse to not do anything about your taxes right now because this is like in your face. And by the way, what a great argument to get your property taxes reduced is if you had COVID collection issues, right? Uh, yeah. So, 
once you discover that what the price paying is, it's actually easy, not from a time, effort, energy standpoint, but from knowing what you should do standpoint. And again, this goes really with everything. It's just been my experience that if you're prepared to pay the price to get whatever it is you want to get, it's easy from there knowing what to do because you already know. It's not like you got to wake up and go, oh, now what do I do? Why do I do that? But once you've committed and you've committed to paying the price, it's easy to do. The implementation part of it sometimes cannot be that easy, but you already know that going in because you're prepared to pay the price. In this case with like everything, but especially multifamily, and especially today, especially today. Um, so I, you know, I talk to investors when they get really worked up about stuff, you know, about this and issues or problems, and <clears throat> maybe they missed out on a deal, they got beat out when somebody else bought a property before they did. Um, you know, their, their manager decided to sell a property that was doing great. They didn't really want to sell. I mean, all these kinds of things. These things are going to happen. But as long as you remain consistent and you've got that vision of what you want to achieve through investing, owning actively or passively, it's easy. It really is. And it really helps prevent you from overthinking the process. It really does. 